Hey, what's up spooky fam? Welcome to day two of cult horror movie review week. This is actually not technically a horror movie, but like I said, cults are scary, so it's a horror movie. Um, this is Martha Marcy May Marlene from 2011, directed by Sean Durkin. Where we follow a young woman who is suffering from paranoia and delusions after escaping an abusive cult and returning to her only living family. This movie is starring Elizabeth Olsen and Sarah Paulson and a bunch of others that you'll probably recognize from other movies. Before we get into any of this, if you enjoy this video, if you are enjoying cult horror movie week, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, subscribe for more, check out my links down below. Let's first talk about a, a bit about the real story behind Martha Marcy May Marlene. In 2007, Sean Durkin started writing Martha Marcy May Marlene based on the real life story of a girl who escaped a violent cult and around the experiences of a friend who later came forward to share her story. So knowing that all of this possibly, well, did happen, it, it's a lot because this movie is a lot and um, there's some things that I'm going to get into but I will say right now this has been stated as the gold standard for cult movies to show the deprogramming process a little bit of that and how real things can get and how fast it happens. While filming, Sean Durgan uh, instructed the actors not to use the word cult. They didn't say the word cult on set. They wanted, he wanted it to be more believable for the actors that were there to live the experience and not feel like they were in a cult. In this movie, they shot all of the farmhouse scenes before any of the lake house scenes and they kept Elizabeth Olsen away from Sarah Paulson so that they kind of hoping that they would have a little bit of a off chemistry but they got along very well so that's nice but they did film the farmhouse scenes first so that Elizabeth Olsen was in full brainwash mode. So let's talk about the movie itself really quickly. Hopefully very briefly. I know I can get carried away, but we are introduced firstly to Martha, a 22 year old woman who was living on the farmhouse, like I mentioned, which is a cult. Martha had been given the name Marcy May upon arrival. We then see Martha escape into the woods, arriving at a nearby town where she ago a goes where she goes to a diner and then is confronted by one of the cult members. He tries to bring her back, she refuses, and then at a random bus station we see Martha contact her sister, who is Sarah Paulson, um, kind of indecisively trying to decide whether she wants to go back to where she came from or go home. Then, given a split perspective between Marcy May in the cult and Martha's real life back home with her sister and her sister's husband. In present time, we see Martha try and adjust to what was normal life before, but we see her having difficulty. She just thinks she can be free like life was in the cult. She's swimming naked, she's sleeping to whatever time she decides to sleep to but she's also becoming sad and depressed and not helping out, not getting a job. This results in family tension. And you wanna talk about family tension, Martha climbs into bed with her sister and her husband while they are having sex and it is very awkward, but this is something that was normalized where she came from because they were literally just free for all, you know? <laughs> I hate to say that, but that's the life that she was living. After this, they have an argument and Martha decides to reach out to the cult using the name Marlene Lewis, which there we get the name Martha Marcy May Marlene. Flashbacks, we recall events that caused Martha to want to leave the cult. She was raped in initiation as well as other women who she ended up being the um, let's say she coerced these women into the initiation the same way that she was initiated. 
she was urged to murder a cat which thankfully she didn't do um but then she ended up participating in other horrific events there was a robbery, a murder. After all of that, Martha has a breakdown and is berated by the cult leader for not following through with the cult's ideals. Back in reality, Martha's sister and her husband throw a party where Martha mistakes the bartender for a former cult member. She has a panic attack, she is sedated, has a nightmare, and when her brother-in-law tries to help, she kicks him down a flight of stairs. Martha's sister tries to talk her into going to a psychiatric hospital and getting help. She then responds by telling her she would be a terrible mother. And I feel like this is just a response that she has because she's not adjusting well to being back in reality. The next day they reconcile somewhat and Martha goes swimming and she sees a man watching her from across the water. The movie ends with us feeling the paranoia that Martha feels because we see a car following closely behind them as they drive off. The three of them are driving off um, and we see a, a car. We have no idea if it's someone from the cult, if it's just a random person. I think it's someone from the cult personally because she did reach out. but. It's it is kind of an ambiguous ending and I like that a lot because we are left to feel the ambiguity and the uncertainty that Martha feels being back with her family and not with the family she thought she had. All right, let's talk about some facts uh, facts about the movie. John Durkin started writing and thinking about this movie in 2007 and it wasn't produced into, until 2011, but while researching, he read about what he called the big ones, which were Jonestown, the Manson family, and the Unification Church of the United States, which was the Waco tragedy. He wanted this movie to be more experimental and less political, which I appreciate. And he intentionally downplayed the ideology and intentions of the cult. While researching this film, Sean Dorgan was so fascinated by the farm life and commune lifestyle. Someone gets stuck and taken by that world. He created a short film before any of this, which I, in hindsight, wish I would have known about before getting into this movie, um, which was called Mary Last Scene. I've seen this movie three times now. Um, Martha, Mar Martha Marcy May, there's so many M names, um, but I've seen Martha Marcy May Marlene three times now, and this is the first time a few days ago that I saw Mary Last Scene, Alex and I watched it. It's just about 13 minutes long, but the short focuses more on the side of how you are coming into the cult life and being taken by that and kind of seeing red flags along the way. But Martha Marcy May Marlene, the full length movie, makes the whole thing, both sides, so much more enthralling. So let's talk about Mary Last Scene because like I said, it's only 13 minutes. You guys can find it on Vimeo. Um, if I remember, I will link it down below so you can check it out. This is about a young woman who takes off on a road trip with her boyfriend to a place he promises to be beautiful and peaceful, but a series of odd events happen on the way and it's clear their relationship isn't what she thought and her destination is nothing like what he promised. And it's definitely sad to watch because you can kind of along the 13 minutes see all of the red flags and you want to scream like don't go <laughs> just leave but this short serves as a prequel to martha marcy may marlene like i said and it does feature some of the same people and the exact same setting it's a 13 minute short look into how fast things go south in this kind of situation and part of me wishes I definitely would have just known about this being a thing before I saw the movie, even the first time that I watched Martha Marcy May Marlene. So let's wrap this up with a few more small facts about the movie. Sarah Paulson was offered this role directly and while I'm not really a fan of her in all things outside of I say all things outside of Bird Box. Um, I do feel like she played the, the role of the overbearing sister, um, kind of, I don't know, 
she played that role really well. Martha Marcy May Marlene was shot over 20 days, that's it. And it does feature one of my very favorite actors, Christopher Abbott. And like I mentioned in the beginning, the cult deprogrammer, I watched the Vanity Fair video, um, this man, his name is Rick Allen. Um, he, I'm gonna link that video. I, I'm gonna try and link these videos as I'm editing this, but he says that this is the gold standard for cult film depictions so if you're gonna try and show anyone a movie about a cult this is definitely the one so i'm going to wrap this movie video up here tomorrow we're gonna talk about ready or not which may be a little bit of an unconventional cult movie pick but i have a lot to say about it since i just watched it so recently so thank you for watching check all my links down below i will see you very soon tomorrow <laughs> Sayonara, spooky fam.